I think it's really easy to think of photography as a technical pursuit and to correlate how good you are as a photographer with how much knowledge you've accumulated and then practiced it. And I think that would be a very misguided and limited way of thinking about things. I wanna talk about some of the unspoken things when it comes to photography that influence how good of a photographer you are because it is not just about your knowledge and your creativity. There is more to it. And if you kind of kindle those different things, you can grow further as a photographer. Maybe you're looking at a lot of other photographers and you're like, I get, I know my ISO, I know my shutter, I know my aperture, I know all this stuff, I know everything to know about lighting, and you can deconstruct other photographers' work just by looking at it, which you should be able to do, by the way, but maybe you're not really getting those types of images yet, and you're wondering why, so today, I want to talk about some of the other things that do influence your photography and I'm hoping what I'm gonna do is plant a seed in your brains and maybe you guys can start thinking about it um, and you guys can let me know what you think. So the first one would be your state of mind. When you're going out and shooting, your mindset has a huge influence on the type of work you're gonna get. If you guys look at my work, whether it's my street photography or my event photography, I have built a name for myself by focusing on capturing these emotion-filled candids and, in, and interactions. And it's something I've learned to do in part by being very present with my photography. And what I mean by that is that when I'm shooting, I'm really observing the totality of what's going on around me. I'm not just zeroed in on one person. I'm able to zero in on one person at times. But the main thing is that I'm very present and just aware of what's going on. This lets me monitor one thing while being prepared to photograph another thing. And this way I'm not missing many shots. As a street photographer, I'm not really interested in creating the kind of work that I call clever but not compelling. These would be images like where maybe i've okay i'll give you a very specific example i've seen online where maybe someone's walking past a billboard the billboard has a figure with their hand out and the way the person snaps a photo it looks like the person walking by is holding that billboard person's hand it's clever but not very compelling to me so what i try to do is capture really authentic real things things happening i mean that's what street photography is about for me it doesn't have to be for everyone um but I wouldn't be able to do that if I weren't really aware and letting things come to me. Basically, you can't force those situations. You can force being clever if you see an interesting composition, but you can't really force a compelling image that's about an interaction about people. You just have to have the right mindset to capture it when it makes itself known. Another thing about your mindset is when you're relaxed, Physically, you're mentally going to be relaxed, and if you're mentally relaxed, you're physically going to be relaxed. So being a good photographer is in part about being very calm and cool. It ends up coming back down to presence, but if you guys are curious about what you can do mentally to stay relaxed, I really recommend looking into stoicism. If you're not familiar with it, it's sort of, I call it one step past Buddhism, where being Buddhist is accepting what is and just going with it, but stoicism is not only taking what is, you see, you see what you have, you decide what can be controlled and what can't be controlled, you accept it, but you use what can be controlled for your the best, for the betterment of yourself, for people around you, etc. So when you have that attitude, for example, if you're shooting a wedding and it rains, you accept it, it's raining. Now how can I use it? How can I make interesting portraits given the fact that it's raining. And maybe you'll get pushed to do something even more creative. When it comes to physical stuff, if you want to be physically more relaxed, which will again in turn relax you mentally, what I would recommend is just breathing exercises, keeping a steady breath throughout your, you know, your shoot or whatever it is, or if you're out shooting street photography, just keep a steady breath and you're gonna stay relaxed it will make you more present, it will mentally make you calmer, and when you're mentally calm, it kind of returns a favor, and you will physically be calmer. Now, it's really easy for me to say, hey, just be really calm, self-aware, and present, right? But I've been doing this for a very long time, and what that means is most of what I'm doing is now unconscious. I don't have to think about setting my shutter, aperture, ISO, the direction of my light, the quality of my light, um, and the many, many things that you have to worry about as a photographer. Because when you have to worry about any 
single thing consciously, it takes you out of the moment. Um, I believe I made a video in the past about this where I talk about my juggling analogy. If not, I should make it. But imagine you're really good at juggling three balls, but then I give you a fourth ball. When you're juggling three balls, you're not thinking about it anymore. You just naturally do it. You can walk and talk and juggle. But when I give you a fourth, you have to stop and think. And that moment is sort of a buffer from you know, seeing something you want to document and then capturing it. And so the more things you kind of push to the subconscious region of your brain and form habits, the more fluid you'll be and the more able you'll be to be present. The next thing that's often overlooked, in fact, I've never heard anyone talk about this, is athleticism. And I'm going to say it right now, being athletic can improve your photography. So let's apply it to event photography, something I know really well. If you're moving around like a rhino, you know, and you're not able to navigate a crowd effectively by A, going unnoticed and B, not being just not being like uh, being able to navigate it just smoothly so you can get from point A to point B, that's going to be a problem. You don't want to be a lumbering rhino. You want to be a very like elegant snake when you move around at an event. And and to do that, you have to be body conscious and what I mean by that is self-aware of how you move I'm not talking about being able to bench you know 500 pounds or some crazy thing that's not what I mean by athleticism in fact if you had too many muscles it could be a problem I would not want to be a larger person for the type of work I do I want to go unnoticed in fact like you could if the smaller perhaps the better maybe you can't get as good a perspective if you need to get high but you know that's what ladders are for I guess uh, I actually saw a guy at a Bernie Sanders rally because I wanted to go photograph Bernie. Um, and I did. I shot him with my Rolly Flex, and I really can't wait to share those with you guys, but I haven't actually developed it yet. But there was a guy who I kind of like, he was breaking some rules. I would never do it. I don't want to call it a rule, but he was standing right in front of people and filming them. Whereas normally you would have to hunch over, duck down. You, you'd you feel like you were in the way because people were there to see a specific person. And this guy's standing right in front of them, but he was like five foot. And I think he got away with it. So size can help your photography sometimes, but it doesn't matter how large you are. Being able to be very self uh, body conscious, meaning aware of how you're moving, moving fluidly, deliberately, and not calling attention to yourself, and also being fluid enough to quickly get into a position if you need to get into a specific position, goes a long way. I think in street photography and in event photography, wedding photography, it doesn't matter. Being able to move well goes a lot further than what you wear as far as going unnoticed. If you guys want some tips on going unnoticed, my last video actually covered that. So there you guys have two things maybe you haven't considered before when it comes to improving your photography, but I want to leave you with one more thing, and that is that your creativity is a muscle, and a muscle can be developed or it can atrophy. And so I do think mostly we are pretty much born creative or not, but you can take what creativity you do have and you can work with it. So I want to give you guys an example of how you need to constantly work your creativity or an example from my life where I've noticed if I don't shoot for a few weeks and I come back to shooting, maybe I took a vacation or something, my first job back or my first time out shooting, I'm a little bit rustier. Now, it's not a huge deal because I've done this for so long that it's like it's it's kind of like jujitsu for me when I start training. It's just so familiar. You know, I actually move because I don't sleep well. Um, I do jujitsu moves in my sleep because it's so ingrained in how I move. And so when I shoot, it's so ingrained in how I like to move that it all comes back very quickly. But that said, I've noticed I do need more of a warm up prior to in comparison to when I've shot a lot. In fact, even if I've shot like five jobs in one week and I'm exhausted, I find I do a better job each job or I'm just I'm just in the flow, you know? So creativity is definitely a muscle. Um, I think it's something you should exercise with shooting, but also don't limit yourself to photographing things. Um, try other methods of being creative in order to kind of feed your creativity build up that creative muscle and then keep shooting. So what I hope is that this information today will kind of get you guys to think a little bit outside of the box and expand your horizons of what you might think is possible or what is possible to work on when it comes to growing as a photographer.
If you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. I try to put out original content that's not just regurgitated information because A, I don't watch too many YouTubers and B, I just draw on my actual work experience as a photographer. Unfortunately, videos like this are not very reachable to people. There are people will have a harder time finding them. I know that. It's not like you can just search a video title like this one compared to searching for gear. So if you want content like this, I hope you'll follow. Um, Friday, I am doing a podcast with Monochrome Memoirs, which I'm really excited about. Look out for that. Follow that channel if you don't already. I really appreciate what they're doing because like me, they're drawing on their actual work experience as a working photographer rather than just regurgitating information you don't really know anything about. Um, I'm not saying other YouTubers are doing that, but other YouTubers are doing